Hello everyone, welcome back to Stormworks Build and Rescue, and today we're checking out my big um, ship here, the, no that's not its name, this is the same, Spirit of Expedition. So I'm a little bit late to making this video, uh, the ship's already kind of um, peaked on the workshop, but still want to make it show off some of the cool features on the ship that some people might have missed. Um, so we're going to do a full tour, we'll start from, start from here, so we'll treat this as ship that's just been parked up. We're jumping on for the first time. Oh, and we fall in. Fantastic. Okay. Um, well, there's a ladder here, so that's that's not a problem. So, as soon as you come in the door, you're greeted by the Deck 2 reception area. So, basically we've got Deck 2, Deck 3, and then Deck 4 just above there. You can see part of it. And then we've got deck 1 beneath that, and then deck 0 again below that, which is the uh, crew area. So, deck 2 passenger cabin. Up forward, we have a nice little um, cafe area. Got a little kitchen in here, and if we go... Actually, you know what? We'll do the library first. We'll do this in a kind of a loop. So we'll go and hopefully try and cover all the areas without kind of passing through anywhere twice. We've got a library on deck 2 as well. So, a little kind of internet area. Nice uh, painting. Uh, some nice books and then you've got the cafe obviously when you go forward of that then you're brought into a crew staircase now this gives you access to the cafe kitchen as well so the crew can come up and into here without kind of going through the passenger areas and then you also go into the forecastle which is where all of your mirroring um, stuff is and then up at the very front you've got your anchors so you can well when the sonar is on you'll see the sonar there so you know how much to let out and then you can keep an eye on the anchors through the camera. So we will move back down to the next deck and this is the deck one. Yeah, deck one. So this is the main passenger deck. So this is where all the passenger cabins are. Um, you'll see most of the cabins are locked. don't know why they're the same name. They shouldn't. Um, apart from a few. So every so often you'll see a cabin that's furnished. And that's just basically so that not all the cabins are furnished because you don't need them all to be furnished. Um, and it just saves on the on the resources being used. And then every cabin's got a nice little TV and then you can switch it on to Storm News if you want. Or Sawyer News. And then little bits of safety equipment and uh, clothing, so that's the kind of stuff. So we'll close that up again. You'll notice these quite a lot throughout the ship. So we've got two on each of the decks below the main deck level. Um, these are water type bulkheads so the main control is all on the bridge and then you have the override controls here so if you're stuck behind here you can open that briefly while it's closed you can press the button and it'll open it so you can get through and then it'll close behind you again automatically. So where to next? I think we'll go all the way down to the back here. So all the way down it's just more and more and more cabins 
and it brings you all the way back to the end of the boat. Now, this is the main um, sort of passenger atrium that we're about to go up into. So we'll go to deck two in the elevator and it'll bring us out here. And this is the atrium, the bottom of the atrium. And if we come back through here, that bit we'll get to later, you've got the passenger galley or, well, not the passenger galley, but the passenger restaurant galley. And then that leads you up to the passenger restaurant. So you've got a, a bar and then lots and lots of tables and chairs for all the passengers. And then some more seating around the atrium. And then you can go all the way forward again. More and more cabins. And you've got another reception, same as down below. Basically what this means is that if you're somewhere where the... The dock level is a bit higher. You've got two different levels that you can board from, so you're not um, you're not reliant on the the gangways being too um, posable that they can do such a height range. Then we have the forward bar and um, sort of lounge area. So you've got these nice big windows all the way around, so you can get a good view, and you can see out right in front of the ship as well. You can also go and go out on deck winch only point so this is if you need to do a, a medivac off the ship you would have the helicopter throw the the winch down and uh, pick up your casualty take them away up there's the wheelhouse get up there in a wee minute um from here then where will we go we will go we've done all of that we'll go back down here because i've just realized i've missed something so this brings us back down to deck two where we have the arcade so get the lights on nice uh, color changing lights and you've got control so you can change the color and then you can turn on all the arcade equipment we've got a pool table we have snake which I'm not even going to attempt because I'm terrible at it uh, we have chess which I also don't know how to play and flappy bird which is extremely difficult yeah brilliant um, all of this stuff uh, including the color picker for the lights is all linked in the description of the ship on the workshop so if you want to find out what it is and use it yourself and that's where you can get them so we'll head back into the lift and this time we've seen deck three we'll head to deck four and this is the uppermost uh, passenger deck and once we're up here then you're at the very top of the atrium so you can view right down to the bottom there and then you can open these big doors and go out to the seating areas on the back so this is if you're cruising along you can have passengers out here observing the view the view today isn't great because we've just got a pier in the middle of the ocean um ignore that that's just because if i put it anywhere near land uh we'll get even worse um frames per second than we're already getting um so yeah we'll try and avoid that got the nice uh, flag hanging off the back because you yeah, always need to have a flag on a boat i think right so we will now head more forward up into the explorer suites and the explorer suites are sort of more fancy cabins so all the other cabins are the same apart from these two so you've got bigger beds more room um same tv setup um but a nicer view at the windows as well then because you've got bigger windows and then similar kind of safety and um arctic equipment knock the lights off again then when we go out and then forward of that is crew access and then you can go back out onto the deck, full um, wraparound promenade as well. So you can walk all the way around the ship. So this is the sort of um, crew corridor, crew passage, um, another access out onto the deck. And then you come into the bridge lobby. So we've got waiting area here, uh, more safety equipment, crew conference room. This is for organizing stuff for the crew, briefing them on. I don't know if you're coming into port or way you're going to do it. Or if you're stopping off somewhere all that kind of stuff and then the captain's quarters in here nice bed tv you can monitor the radar if he wants and then more safety equipment and stuff like that and then the most important part of the ship the bridge so once you come in through that door on your left you have the light controls for the entire ship so this is pretty much all the lights some of the smaller areas have individual lights that are just independent but most can be controlled from up here and you can see the ones that are lit up 
that's the ones that have been turned on while we've been walking around the ship we can remotely turn them on then also got bridge lights which have a day mode and night mode so that you can turn them to a nicer color for operating in the dark and then you've also got all your fuel tanks so there's six fuel tanks and then the service tank um, overall it's about 230 tons I think and that should be good for over a hundred kilometers at least and um, you've then got your circuit boards and all that kind of stuff for the all the ship your generator control this is just a generator that will run all the time keep the batteries topped up um, once the batteries go below a certain amount the generator will then increase its power output so that you can boost them back up again we then have the nav light controls so all of these different lights this is rather than having lights like or a button for not under command a button for restricted maneuverability this way you can configure the lights to whatever you want these are the three main ones so your masthead your stern light and your side lights so your red and green up at the front your mast light up at the front and then your other mast light up at the back and then the stern light there but then you can also configure them really you can configure them to do most stuff that this um, type of boat would need their nav lights for. So if we turn off our masthead, turn on our top red light, our lower white light, and then our bottom red light, I think. That will give us restricted ability of maneuver, but underway. So you've got your side lights on, your um, mast lights of the red, white, red, and then your stern light as well. That way people know that they're heading away from you. So, let's get the instruments fired up. Instruments, you've got sonar, GPS autopilot, uh, radar, dynamic positioning. So, this basically holds the ship in position um, if you're in an area that you can't use the anchor. Um, it's not the strongest system because of just the, the style of the ship. It doesn't really accommodate to having the actual equipment that you would need for that to be properly strong and stuff. But it still works very, very well. You've also got the data link. This allows you to communicate with other ships that have um, this system installed. And then your weather readout here. So currently it's a nice calm day. Zero knots of wind. No rain. Perfect. Up in the uh, middle uh, console here, we've got all our engine controls. So there are eight engines. We will start the first four. Um, eight engines, they can all be controlled independently. And... They'll all run then into the into the system that powers the propeller. Then we've got our watertight doors. So we saw these while we were um, turning around some of the lower decks of the ship. So you can do that one. That would be an emergency. You can just close them all. Or you can open that and select individual bulkheads you want to close off. So something this ship does a little bit differently is that it'll run on a mix between diesel uh, propulsion and then a diesel electric hybrid. So when you're traveling along ordinarily, just kind of steaming to a location, you'll run under diesel mode. So it'll come straight from the propellers or straight from the engines into the propellers, your propulsion. But when you enable either dynamic positioning or the bridge wings, so the bridge wings are the little things on the side here, that will switch it over so that the power from the engine is going into a generator and the generator is then feeding an electric motor, which will uh, power the ship. And basically that means you've got more precise controls when you're um, when you're operating the ship in sort of tight confined areas. So to get ready to go, we'll just head down back down the stairs. So this is the midship stair, well the main um, the main crew stairs. And on our way past, we'll stop off here. So this is where you bunker fuel. There's another one of these on the other side behind that door and you can turn on the screen and we will take control to the starboard bunker point and you can select all the tanks that you want to control all that kind of stuff and then control your feed as well so at the minute it's on auto and that way it just runs as it does anytime and at the minute it's basically on a big massive day tank and in the day tank will just kind of fill up when it needs to so that you'll not see the main tanks go down very often and then you've got fuel connector and a fuel hose as well. So if you're working with more old fashioned stuff that used the connector, you're still able to use it. Then we've also got the man overboard sling, the camera that's broken for some reason. I'll have to add that to the list of things need fixed. 
this is basically if anyone falls over you can come around and collect them with the, the man overboard sling and it just makes it a bit easier than them having to climb onto the ladder or anything but we will fold all that up and we will continue downwards yes we will so pass pack um, so get down to the bottom of the staircase and this is our crew area so in here we've got battery room uh, that also has access up to that other area that you saw on the other side the crew mess so this is where the crew can come eat relax all that kind of stuff nice big tv sofas and stuff and then they've got their own galley as well for cooking and forward of that then is your forward stairwell so that's the one we came down onto deck one on and then you've got a crew cabin again most of the cabins are all locked so that you've got um less resources being used and then you've got a little cold store room with access to the keel tunnel and then the void up at the front where the bow thruster is so if anything happens in there you can repair it and still have your bow thruster controls so once we come through the aft bulkhead on deck zero come into the medical room so you've got heaters supplies um medical beds so that you can keep people well if they're injured on any excursions or anything or if you pick up anyone from a shipwreck or something and then down past that is your engine control room and engine room so this is a mirror of the um the controls on the bridge you can control everything from down here that way wherever you are you have a bit of control and then you've also got emergency steering so you've no throttle controls but you can still control the rudders from down here and that means if anything happens to the bridge you can still control it uh, somewhat a little bit of uh, emergency equipment and repair equipment and then duck this is very important later because when you come in here you need to duck to get under these so yeah then we have another um, display here with the instrumentation for the um, fuel and then you can take control of the engine room and then that way when you press the button it works on this screen this is the fuel uh, control system everything comes in here from your six tanks and then feeds it into the day tanks which are underneath the engines um, as I said eight engines and then two auxiliary engines these are for your bow thruster and then for your stern thruster then and then here is your electric motors for the props so when your maneuver mode is active the propeller will be powered by the motor and then all of the energy from the engine is fed into the generator to make the power it should be on that now actually yeah it is and then you've got your your motors powered as well up at the front then we have the generator this is the little generator that just runs all the time just runs at about five rps and it just keeps the keeps the engine or keeps the batteries kind of trickle charged and then you'll see these pumps all about the place that way if you've got any ingress of water you can um stop the flooding well not stop the flooding but pump out some of the water speaking of flooding you'll notice these doors around the ship some places um these are for the scuttle so you can't scuttle the boat if you really really want to and uh sink it on command basically and then you've got doors then that kind of allow the water to flow about the ship a bit easier that is exhausts leaking through the wall because they've messed up the exhausts in the new update made them all uh, ridiculous looking this will be fixed didn't realize this until um just walking around that's been added to the list of things to fix so yeah this is pa past the um reception area and then the restaurant galley and then this brings you down into the sort of crew preparation room for um excursions so you've got all of your equipment here that the passengers can put on and then the crew can kind of work out of here but it also gives you access to the back deck which is your boarding area for the rib if you so choose to use here or you can use one of the side ones which we'll cover in a minute and then you've got your mirroring areas up here so we'll just untie that now seeing as there's no wind we don't really need to leave them on until the last minute we'll, we'll not move too much um, although actually we'll, we'll leave that one on and then we can bring that one back when we get the rib so the rib you might have seen if you've already downloaded the ship is included when you download it as a separate vehicle a lot of people seem to think that it was included on the ship as well so sorry about the confusion on that um also in here you've got the the mimicked controls on the other side so it's the same either side that you're fueling from so yeah this is the wee rib 
um, that comes along with it then. And basically you can use this as a tender to the main boat and uh, use it for going ashore or ferrying passengers away if there's an emergency or something like that. Not really designed to be used as a life raft but it can, or a lifeboat, but it can double up as it if needs be. Good chance to get a good look at the, well it's not really because of the exhaust, but good look at the, um, the size of the boat. It's big, big boat. Right, so well, we've got the thingy tied up on the back. Let's go along and knock off the engine. And we'll also turn on the running lights. This is just because the ship doesn't have lights on it for towing, so we'll just leave the side lights on and then that way when it's dark people can still see then that you've got the, the boat behind you. Still identify it being towed along. So grab our last rope, stick that in there. Everything in here should be grand then. We'll turn off our lights and the controls for the pump or the winches. Close the doors that way if there's any crashes or anything we won't um, have water flooding about the place. Then we'll make our way back up into the forecastle, do the same again. We'll just quickly stop here, grab the gangway up and close the door behind us. That way we'll not have any last minute passengers jumping on board. And then we will head back up the stairs, all the way to the top end of the bridge and we will get underway. So I'll actually go out the side door here because the controls have already been transferred over to the side. And because we've got the dock on this side, we're going to take control up here on the starboard bridge wing. So stick the bow thrusters on. Bow thrusters then will run off the generators with the power that they're producing, and then they'll kick us out to the side. They're not the most powerful thing in the world, but they're enough to get the job done. You can see we're getting pushed off nicely enough. I'll just kind of make some space in between us and the um, and the pier. Why do we do that? Because we've nothing really else going on around here. We will just take this opportunity to turn off the lights that I turned on. There we go. We'll just stick with our basic nav lights. And then once we're out far enough, we will engage forward helm on the starboard side. And that will just kick us round and sort of start pointing us in this direction, which is ideally where we're wanting to be going. So we'll just head out to sea, see how fast we can get it going. And uh, we'll see how we go from there. So you can hear there the um, the motors revving up. So the electric motors will be on about 20% throttle. And then it'll run the, the diesel motors up to the, the power that it needs then to make the, propul the power for them to make propulsion. Right, that seems good enough there. Let's get that sailing along till we're a wee bit further away from the dock and then we will transfer over control to um, inside. So what, when you've got these controls active, um, you don't have any control from here. So throttling up won't do anything. Steering won't do anything either. Oh no, it will do, it, do stuff. Um, yeah, you've no, no throttle controls when this is active. So... That's why we've had quite a lot of people sort of complaining about the stuff not working. And it's usually because they've got the bridge wings active when they didn't mean to. So, knock that off. Take over control at the helm. There's an incremental throttle, so you press the button and it goes up in 5% uh, each time. Then that way you can set it to a specific throttle that you know will produce a certain speed. So. We'll let that get up to speed on 40% throttle actually, so we'll bring it up a wee bit more. And then we will turn on the other engines as well. Got one, two, three, four, and then we're running all eight engines. In some cases, it could be more beneficial to run all eight than it would be to run four. So, I haven't really tested it properly, but theoretically, if you're running eight engines and you're able to do them at half the load, then it should be more efficient to run at four at like double the speed to get the same power. So, there we go, we're 70% throttle. We're getting up to about 18 or 19 knots there. So, just while we cruise along here, we will take an opportunity to look at the one place we haven't looked at yet, which is up on the roof. So, this is where the dome of the uh, atrium is and your funnel with all your nav lights on the top of the mast and then you've also got this uh, space here for an ISO container so this is if you're going on a sort of 
expedition somewhere and you need more more supplies you can put the container on here it should hold a pretty decent sized container you can even connect it in with your fuel so that you can run generators in it whatever that may need and then also electric so it can both feed electric to the ship and then provide electric to the container if you want it um, then you've got these barrels on the side a few people were confused about what these mean these are ammo drums yes but they're supposed to represent your life rafts because we've no lifeboats on this boat although technically you could really probably use the rib if you needed to um, that's what you would have instead when you don't have the lifeboats on board so that would be your, your sort of survival if you were sinking or had the abandoned ship and we've got the forward deck with the big mast and spotlights, searchlights some more uh, mast equipment for communications and also the controls to fold the mast down so this will get you under some bridges, not all bridges but some bridges when this is folded on um, you'll be able to fit underneath them then there are some of them that we will still need to avoid just because of the different heights and stuff um, around the map but yeah you can fold the masts um, right down I'll fold them down to about the height of the, the funnel then will be your, your clearance so yeah you've plenty of um, plenty of room then to get under most of the most of the bridges in the game just while we're passing as well these two ports here these are connected to the inside of the um, cabin or not the cabin the inside of the superstructure so if we run around here have these ports here so that is if you somehow sink the ship if you leave a door open or something it fills it with water it sinks if you're able to then repair any damage and all that kind of stuff you can theoretically salvage the ship because that's the biggest um, compartment of the ship and as long as it stays um, un unflooded you should be able to still keep the ship above water right bring up the full throttle and we'll get her up to full speed We'll see see what that's given us. So it's slightly slower with the the rib on the back. I think it'll go up to about 25 on its own. But uh, at the minute you can see with no infant fuel or anything, we're getting 24 knots and in a range of about 74 kilometers. So if you pull that back even a wee bit, it should bring us up to above 100. There we go. That's jumping way up. And that will be then enough to get you to the arctic so if you look at where we are now arctic is up here we'll set a waypoint 91 kilometers so yeah theoretically you've got enough it, it'll be possibly a bit tight if you're cruising up there full speed you might um just sort of limp in with um some fuel to spare but yeah as long as you're able to buy more up there you should be all right to get home again then i haven't done the trip yet but eventually i will once I have like four or five hours that I don't want to do anything else with. So yeah, that just about concludes the uh, the look around the ship. Hopefully you all um, enjoy the ship and any more questions you have about anything or any suggestions for stuff. Or if you find any more bugs, like even me, I'm still finding bugs and uh, bits that need fixed around the ship. Please let me know and I will do my best to then fix them for the next update on the, on the workshop. But yeah. Hope you've all enjoyed. Thanks for all the subs. All I think it's up to about sixteen thousand at this point, which is a little bit mental. Um, yeah, thanks for all the all the support on the boat. And yeah, hope you all enjoy. See you see us next time. Happy sailing. Bye bye.